Hi, I'm here today with Max Simkoff, who's the VP of Analytics for Cornerstone On Demand. Uh, welcome, Max. Thank you. So, Max, about uh, eight years ago, you were the co-founder of a company called Evolve On Demand. Um, and when you started this company, uh, you said that HR is kind of the final frontier for analytics. What do you mean by that? What, what I meant by HR being the last frontier is that um, HR was one of the last parts of what I think of as enterprise decision making that put in place the systems that enabled predictive analytics to find answers to interesting questions. So if you think about the evolution of a lot of the systems that got put in place in the enterprise that then eventually extended to HR, most of them fall under the umbrella of what we think of as enterprise resource planning or ERP. Um, and HR was among the last uh, functions of the enterprise to get covered by ERP, which meant that up until 10 or 15 years ago, a lot of transactional HR data wasn't being tracked as discrete standardized events in these systems. And once they'd been uh, implemented in things like finance and logistics, um, they finally got pointed towards HR and HR was able to automate things like the hiring process, the onboarding process, um, how uh, annual performance reviews get managed. So it was really just in the last five or 10 years that all of this stuff has been completely automated and now it's come online so a single data set exists behind these processes that can be looked at. So it was really just the, it took a while for the systems and, and processes to get automated and put in a place where we could even have access to data that could be analyzed so that we could answer some of these interesting questions with predictive analytics. But now even though you have access to a lot of this data and some pretty good analytics, uh, I think you see in HR there's still quite a bit of what we might call kind of unfounded gut level decision making. Um, what have you seen? There is. So um, we have, I'll give you an example. Um, the average recruiter, there have been some studies done that show the average recruiter spends about three seconds scanning a resume before they make a decision about how a candidate, a job applicant, will be prioritized in the hiring process. Um, and usually what a lot of these people are looking for is employment history information. And specifically, we found that they look at what they call job hopping behavior. So if somebody's had say three or four jobs in the last one to two year period, uh, they don't seem as attractive a candidate as somebody who's had one job in the last three to five year period. And what we found is that this, um, this intuitive decision making that recruiters go through when they look for something like that that is seemingly well based, right? And it would make common sense that people who have had lots of jobs are likely to leave another job. What we found when we look at the data is that there is no statistical correlation between the number of full-time jobs you've had in the five years leading up to your point of application for any given job. And so this is a great example of uh, where the data tells a different story than what previous experience and intuition tells recruiters. And it's really hard for them to wrap their arms around going from this decades old practice of scanning a resume and looking for job hopping behavior and now trusting an algorithm, for example, that doesn't put any weight on that kind of behavior coming out of a resume. And that, you know, even when confronted with that kind of information, a lot of organizations find that that's a change that needs to take place over time and gradually getting buy-in from recruiters, seeing that the people they hired who had lots of jobs before they applied, that they end up staying for just as long and performing just as well as those who don't have that behavior on their resume. Now, you've talked about how your, your company went from being a hypothesis-driven enterprise to one that is really about data discovery. Can you talk about that process? Sure. Our, we started our company with a hypothesis for how we could solve a business problem. Namely, we believe that if you put a standardized questionnaire, a well-designed mm -hmm. standardized questionnaire in the online application process and then collected back-end performance and tenure data on the people who went through that questionnaire, you could more accurately predict who would stay or perform uh, in a given job. And fortunately, we proved our hypothesis correct. So when we worked with teams of uh, industrial organizational psychologists to design these questionnaires the way that they should be designed and pull the data in the way that should be pulled and demonstrate correlative and in some cases causal relationships between the two, we in fact validated that this type of approach can more accurately identify people who will perform better and stay longer than the traditional approach. What happened as a result, and it was a bit, it was almost inadvertent, was um, as we started taking all this data to validate the hypothesis, we started noticing other relationships in the data set, right? So um, I'll give you one example. The, a person's immediate supervisor in many situations had much more of a statistical correlation with that person's likelihood of staying and performing in a job 
than anything that person exhibited within the questionnaire at the front end of the application process. And so that caused a shift from being this hypothesis-driven company where we needed to validate that you could use this questionnaire to predict people's performance and tenure to being much more of an exploratory data science company and, and trying to identify the long list of relevant questions that organizations should be asking by pointing data science towards their HR data. Max, thanks for coming. Thanks.